Hi and welcome to the video. In this lesson I will teach you Steve Ray Vaughan's uh, scuttle button. It's a 12 bar blues in the key of E and the lesson is going to be divided into four parts. The first part I'm going to break down the main riff. I'm going to teach it to you step by step and show you alternate ways to play it. The second part we're going to discuss the structure of the blues, 12 bar blues, the chords a little bit and some theory behind it. Afterwards, we're going to continue to the third part where I'm going to give you an exercise to basically get the groove of the song down into your, uh, into your feel and your fingers and everything. And then I'm going to give you some licks and phrases which you can fit onto that groove. Uh, the purpose of that exercise is to get you going with your own phrases and licks and put them in context, in musical context of the blues and the style of the tune. The fourth and final part will be a little bit about tone, um, guitar setting, amp setting, and uh, your general sound and how to approach it. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is get familiar with the scale we're playing, right? We're playing an E minor pentatonic. So if I look at the notes, It's a five note scale. We have E, G, A, B, D, and E, and then repeat it an octave up. All right, so now that we have the scale under the fingers, let's look at the riff itself. We start off with the third string, second fret, the A note, and the second finger. So we do a slide up to the B note, the fourth fret, like so. Then we play the second and first string open, like so. Then back to the second string open. A slide from the third fret to the fifth fret, the D to the E. And then play the first string open. Then we take the third finger, place it on the D note on the second string, third fret. Pull off onto the third string, third fret, the A sharp note, pull it off to the A note, and then from there pull off to the third string open G note, and then back to the E note, uh, the tonic, the fourth uh, string, second fret. So very slowly the riff will go like this. sound the sixth string, uh, sixth string, the bass, play an E7 sharp 9 chord. Notice that when I play it, I mute the fourth string and um, have my pinky flattened on the third fret there to get the ninth there. Now, the way you count the riff is if I were to count one, two, three, four, one. It will go on the offbeat of the first um, quarter. So it will be one, two, three, four, one. Okay, 
Okay, so that's time that you are looking at. Again, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so just after the one, it's the eighth note of the offbeat right there. Once we're done with the main melody theme, it's going to go back to the rhythm pattern. And the rhythm pattern is going to go like this. It's an E7 sharp line as we saw before. The way I'm going to play it, slowly it's going like this. So we have a bass, the sixth string open, the E note, the chord, the bass again, twice on the chord, up and down, sorry, down and up, and the sixth string open, and then another strum uh, downwards. So very slowly like this. Okay, so if I count it, one, two, three, four, one, ta, ka, da, ta, 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 da, ta. It's that rhythmic pattern that flows throughout the tune. So, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so on and so forth. Um, the chords throughout the tune will be an A7 and we'll get exactly the same treatment as the chord before except that the bass note this time will be the fifth string open so so nothing has changed except the bass the way I'm uh, uh, fingering this is I'm basically uh, muting the third string because I already have the seventh on top, the G note. So, the timing stays the same, everything stays the same. The third chord will be a B7, sharp 9. Now, there's a little bit of a trick here because it's not straight through just like that. We're going to alternate the bass we're going to start off with the B note on the 5th string and then go down to the F sharp and we get the effect like this okay and you can play around it and see what fits what you like most there's plenty of ways to play it rhythmically where you change the bass but the way I like to do it is sort of on time. It goes one, two, three, four, three, four, bum, bum, bum. Okay, you can do it like that or any other way that fits your uh, taste and style. So now that we have the rhythmic pattern and the riff down, let's glue it together into one. Um, into one thing. So I'll count it up slowly and I'll play the whole thing one time. One, two, three, four, one. to the last bar we go instead of the regular okay we delay the last strum like this one two three four one okay so it continues on to the next uh, riff because it goes on twice so essentially 24 bars before the solo starts Okay, and one last important thing before we move on to the second part will be 
alternate ways of playing the same uh, melodic theme. Now, Steve Ray Vaughan himself plays it differently a lot of time when he plays it live. For instance, the first thing you can do is, if you look at the A going into the B, there's two ways you can do it. You can basically slide inside to the B, or if you want, you can bend the, uh, the A note to the B. And then, if you do that, you have the same option with the second string, the D note, going into the E. Instead of sliding into it, you can bend into the E. Now, it can sound a little bit more uh, aggressive, I guess, uh, powerful maybe, but you need to understand that you can choose and to your own liking whatever you like. And you can combine them. For instance, you don't have to bend both. You can bend one and slide on the second. Or slide on the first and bend the second. Okay, so in this part, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on behind the roof in terms of uh, uh, some theory and, and the chords and, and, uh, and how you want to approach it when you, when you improvise. Now, essentially, we have a 12-bar blues. Now, in the blues, we have the three chords that we talked about, you know, the E7, the A7, and the B7. But we can also refer to it as a tonic, subdominant, and a dominant. Now... The first degree, which is the tonic, usually, if this was a regular major scale, it would be a major seventh chord. But in the blues, we take it as a seventh, as a dominant seventh chord. The fourth degree gets the same treatment. It, instead of it being a major seventh chord as you would expect in a major scale, it gets a dominant seven, a flattened seventh, and that makes it an A seventh fourth degree, subdominant. The fifth is a dominant anyhow, so it stays the same. Except that in this tune, it has a sharp nine added to it. All right? And so does the tonic, it has a sharp nine. Now, this is very common in the blues because we play over this A, the E seventh, sorry. We play the E minor pentatonic. Which means that instead of your regular, if you look at an E major, you would have a G sharp as your third. When we play the minor blues scale, the E minor pentatonic, we play a G natural. Now that's not to say that we cannot play the the the, the sharp, the, the G sharp. We can play it, and we do play it. But uh, the sound of this particular tune, the scuttlebutt in it, it has the sharp nine. And uh, sometimes you'll see Steve Ray Vaughan, when he plays it, he will go and play the, the G sharp. Okay, and you can combine uh, the G sharp and the G natural in your playing while you're on the E get a different sound, the major and the minor. It's sort of cool to, to experiment with it. Now, uh, before we move on, just a few key things. Uh, when you improvise, you obviously can improvise over the entire 12 bars using the minor pentatonic and it will work fine and it will sound good. That's all good and right and that's cool. But if you want to get a little bit more deeper and, and um, into the harmony and chords, I suggest that you start thinking in terms of, of, uh, of momentarily uh, tonics. For instance, when I go to the A, I want to emphasize that A. I want to bring out the notes of that A alongside with the father scale, what I call the E minor pentatonic. For, the, for instance, it's the, the father scale here. Or the mother scale, I want to call it. But um, when you hop over to the A, the A seventh, you want to get that A sound as well. You want to get maybe using a triad with a seventh, for example, like. 
right? I'm playing the one, three, five, and seven of the chord. Now this is very important if you want to get deeper into impro improvisation. You have to know harmonically where you are and then melodically fit it onto the harmony. Now a great and easy tool is using triads. So if I'm on the A chord, for instance, I have this A triad over here and I can use it in my improvisation. So if I go one, two, from the beginning, So all I did there was going to the triad and essentially I get the sound of the A. Now you can combine that with the, the mother or father scale, the, the minor pentatonic of the tune you're in. So we're not going to go too deep to that in this lesson, we will in, in some next lessons, but um, start checking it out, okay? If, if you are in a chord, try to find the triads, the sound that make the particular chord and then mix it with the father-mother scale, okay? We call the mother or father, I don't know, whichever you want. Uh, and then, if, for instance, if you're on E, okay, I'm using sounds from the major, because the chord itself is a major, but I want to combine it with the minor, so for instance, something on the E would can be like this. Okay, you, you combine two sounds and that's great for improvisations uh, particularly for this style because uh, Steve himself did it all the time okay so now to the fun part you know the riff you know the chords behind it and now I'm going to give you something cool to uh, play around with now if we look at the riff inside the structure of the whole tune basically you can think of a riff chord riff chord right so we have one two three four one let's say we take the riff out okay and we just are left with the chords so it will look something like this one two three four now, once you have this going, you have the groove, everything is cool, and the gaps you have, where originally the riff was, start placing your own phrases, start making phrases from the pentatonic scale, from the triads we talked about earlier, from anything that sounds good to you, the most important thing is that A, it will sound good in terms of harmony and, and mel obviously melodically and rhythmically, but the most important thing is to be on time when you set out to do the lick and then when you go back to the riff. What I mean is the gap has to work exactly like the riff. It goes into and out from the, uh, from the rhythm plane. So an example of it would be something like this. Okay, so let's see how this works in practice. For instance, let's take a riff like uh, like this. It's just a, a, a common uh, run on an E on an E chord. Now I don't have to play it exactly like this, but what I what I do aim for is I want to take this concept and I want to place it in the gap between the rhythms that I play and I want to build something from it on the improvisations. So I start off by playing um, the rhythm and then leaving the gap so I can feel the groove and the time. And then after a few times I have it in my head and everything, I start adding in the lick until I feel that it sits and I can move on to a different lick. So that's how you do it. few 
times until I feel comfortable in that zone. Okay, so to get deeper into this uh, uh, sort of thing, what I want to do is I want to take a second lick and then play just that until it sits in my fingers and in my ear and everything and eventually combine it with the first lick into one big lick. Now, uh, before we do it, we have to make sure that each of the licks sits well within the rhythm and that the time is not lost. So just a reminder, the first one we had... <laughs> Okay, the second one we're going to add is going to be like this. And what I'll do there is I'll place it in the correct spot for it to work on the, on the rhythm. So it'll be like this. Okay, so you get the idea, you want to get as many licks as, and as many phrases work in this manner. Now, I want to combine the two and make it into one big lick. Now, obviously the, the gap will have to be bigger, so I'll have to end up on time and go back into the chord. And out from the chord I have to go out on time as well. So just to make sure we understand, we're on the same spot, the two licks combined will be something like this. <laughs> It's, right now it's necessary that you get the concept and the idea and then you can develop it on your own. Uh, not necessarily play exactly what I play, but get it inside your fingers and in your head and then you'll have, be able to do uh, whatever you want to do with it. It will help you to develop yourself as a, as a player, as a musician. So, let's start off slowly. The last one I played didn't quite sit well time-wise, so I'm going to do it again to improve it and to make it sit well the way I see it. Alright, and then slowly up the tempo. I did there is I went on to the A and played a played a, a lick and then on the structure of the blues. That's the next step. You want to take it on the entire blues structure. After you've done each and every chord by itself and you've done quite a few licks and you have those under your belt in your toolbox so to speak, you uh, you want to take the blues at the, the, the normal tempo and do this exercise. And let me tell you this is one of the best exercises uh, that you'll ever get to play. It, 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 it basically works on everything. It works on musicality, which is the most important thing. It works on technique, it works on sound. And all those things put together are what makes you uh, a, a player, a good player, a musician. And that's what you want to aspire and aim for. Okay, so for this last part, I want to talk a little bit about uh, tone. And, um, and how to get that particular tone, or at least the way I see it. Um, I think in general, the, the main sound that you're aiming for is, is a clean, but slightly broken up clean. So a little bit overdriven maybe. Um, it's a matter of taste, of course, but in general, that's the main thing you're looking for. Not too many effects. Uh, I play without any effects, and I add sometimes reverb, but other than that, it's, it's very straightforward, nothing uh, special there. Um, I think you should work on dynamic range with your right hand. You want to be able to pick, to really get into the string, you know, you want to really get... You want to be able to do that, you know, you dig in the string, get that sound. Be accurate with your left hand. Uh, on the notes you play, it's very important. 
vibrato and, and bending. You want to bend up to the correct note. You want to bend up correctly, not too sharp, not too flat. You know, that's things that you can work on. Um, you know, for guitars, I guess it's pretty straightforward to go with a, with a Stratocaster. That's not to say that a, that a Les Paul type of guitar or a or Telecaster type of guitar would not work. They would. But uh, if you're particularly into uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, I would probably go with a Strat. You know, experiment with the pickup settings. You want to maybe place it on the neck. Uh, you know, just take just take a, a, a riff or a lick and experiment with, with how it sounds. You know, if you take something like a... That's, that's the next sound. If you bring it down one step... I'll give you this sort of sound. And... It's the middle and in between. You know, if you go to the bridge... So, you know, you have to experiment like, on, on things like that. Uh, the last bit, I guess, is, is the choice of your amp. Uh, to me, it's very simple. I, I, uh, I found an amp that's, that's not too complicated. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's too based. And then um, I, I want to get that, that, you know, slightly broken up clean sound, uh, overdriven a little bit maybe. And you can experiment with those settings and, and, you know, get your tone. Eventually, your fingers and hands and everything will come together and it will tune to what you hear in your head. And that will work as one unit. Um, and I guess the last thing is that listen as, as, as much as you can for, for, for that tone, for players you like. You know, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's Steve Ray Vaughan, then, you know, know, know the songs, know the tunes. Uh, learn them as much as you can, get a lot of info on what gear you used and just, you know, try to get it down and work on it. So I hope this was uh, helpful to you and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.